Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jacob Restituto, and I'm a musician from Northport, New York, and I have the absolute pleasure of having Joel, Blar Joel Barnes here on the channel today. Thank you so much, man, for taking the time. It is an absolute pleasure to have you. Man, thank you for having me, man. It's been yeah. amazing. Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward to chatting, man. Uh, being mainly, I mean, a couple of reasons why, but uh, it's actually pretty wild to have the opportunity to talk to some of the people that I've had on the channel, including you, and the fact that, like, Dude, I, I've been singing your song, you know, especially Promises, for like months oh. and months now. So the fact that we're actually having this chat is just like, it's a, it's an incredible opportunity. So I, I, I don't want to mitigate that. I want to say thank you very much for that. For taking man, the time. it's an absolute honor to be here. Man. Thank you so much for thinking of me, man. I'm really, of really course. Good. Absolutely. So let's uh, if, have the people introduce yourself. So um, can you kind of give a little backstory of who you are, what you do in music, and, and, and kind of just, we'll take it from there? Yep. So my name is Joel Barnes. I'm a Kentucky native, born and raised in the bluegrass fields of Kentucky. Um, Singer songwriter for a, a company called Maverick City. Very so. cool. Love that. How did you get involved with Maverick City? I snuck in. <laughs> I, I, that. I wish. I really wish I was joking. I'm serious. Like I actually snuck in. So my, I've been friends with Dante Bow and Aaron Moses since like 2014, 2015. So we've have a history of just always being really like close and good friends. Dante was invited to the original like Maverick um, in like writing camps. Back then they were invite only. Um, now they're more so open to the public. You can sign up and register for our, our online classes or some of our in-person classes. Um, but yeah, so Dante got originally invited. And after the second invite, it was about, that's when they were like Mav 2. So Mav 2, it just came out right when they were starting the write camp for Mav 3. Mm. And Dante had an invite and I was like, I'm gonna just sneak in with you and you know hopefully don't kick me out so he was like all right bet just don't embarrass me get in here and write good songs i'm like all right say less no um so that's amazing actually i literally snuck in um and the first thing that we did was we started worshiping prayer and i remember meeting tony for the first time he said hey if you're here then you need to understand you belong here him not even knowing I was there yet. He's just like, if you're in this room, it's because you belong here. He's like, I don't care how you got here. Yeah. He like, literally, it was the craziest thing. Like, I felt like he was talking directly to me. <laughs> He's like, I don't care how you got here. I don't care. Like, if you're in the room, you're supposed to be here. And God like, is intentional about your life. And then after, like, the whole worship and prayer moment, everybody's, like, in worship and we pray for each other. And then we start our day. Dante walks me up to him and was like, hey, this is my brother. He's going to be with me. He was like, okay, cool. That's fine. He didn't even know I was there yet. So then after that second day, we ended up right. Well, my first day, I was like, you know, kind of nervous, like getting to the flow of things. But the second day that I was there, we ended up writing promises. Mm. Wow. So he pulled me aside and we're like, hey, this, this song feels good. Like we should like test this and see what, you know. So from that so point on. When, when, what year was that? What, what time? What's the time? Like the... Okay. So that was relatively recently. Yeah. So, but it's interesting, like, it's, it kind of goes back, and this is part of the reason I love having these conversations, is because people don't realize the depth of time or work that it sometimes takes to become a musician, yeah. um, or a songwriter, or have, you know, your songs sung by other people, or whatever the case is, uh, but I love the encouragement, I love encouraging people to show, showing them that it's actually possible, like, you know, everybody yeah. says that, you know, it's impossible to make it in the music industry, well, it's not actually true, here's living proof, right? Right. But, I love the fact that you mentioned that you've known Dante for now almost seven years. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've been friends with him. You've been, you know, talking with him and everything. Um, and, and, but now it was only five years into that relationship. And, you know, two years ago that you had written, that you kind of snuck into Maverick City and, mm -hmm. and had this opportunity. So it's just interesting how, how, how timelines work out. You know, it's not always as instant as we think or hope they would be, you know? Yeah. So, so what does a typical writing camp look like? I'm curious, what you, you know, the the writing camps that Maverick does, even then versus now, if they're different or the same, what do they look like? Um, most of the camps, like we, kind of just come together and see what happens. Really, it's not even like mute, like song driven, mm -hmm. or like then like of course we go in and we want to write songs, but we give a space to where like if we never get out if we never come out with a song but like god moved in our sessions mm. we're totally okay with that like i think more than anything like i think mav we've come out with amazing songs but 
in my camp experience, I've made lifelong friendships. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, uh, me and my friend Carrington, like we started the idea of promises together, like, and we've been friends ever since. Like, I'm like me and Naomi, like we are lifelong friends for yeah. that. But like, of course, we go in and we write songs. So like, we'll set it up to where it's like maybe forty people. This is pre, this is pre covered by the way. Sure, sure, sure. And even now, we still make sure that we that everyone get tested before you come in. And sure. So, um, it's usually like forty people. And it's like four people to a room and we just see what God wants to do. Mm. Like we'll start a conversation, we'll talk and, or we'll pray together or we'll ask questions and out of the conversation, especially after leaving the worship space, we'll just see what God wants to do. If it comes out in the form of song, great. If it comes out in yeah. the form of minister to each other, great. You know? I'm curious the ratio to uh, written to release. How many do you think you guys end up writing that you don't end up releasing? Uh, that's a hard question to answer because I think a lot of times what, what was written in one like setting might not have been good for the next, for the current record. So then mm. it does come out on the record after that. So it's like, it that's might, fascinating uh, actually. Yeah. So the, it might swing from, you might hear a song like, uh, be praised that was written way before that like that album but then it yeah. came out an album yeah but it was written like two albums ago. You know what i'm saying yeah. like it's it's it varies so i think something always gets like released at some point in some way i think so, we're doing different things so it might be released as a, as a youtube video mm. it might be released as a youtube video and a single and an actual record it might be released as a moment on instagram like it's gonna you know what i mean some things can be released at different times I very much appreciate that mentality because I think, and I'd love to know your perspective on this, so many artists I find kind of have the idea of like, if it's not the perfect song, then it doesn't get to see the light of day. Um, right. They end up, shel they write these songs and they end up shelving half of them or more than half of them and only release, you know, they'll write 30 songs for an album and release 12, you know what I mean? It's like, I, I always find that so fascinating because like, how do you know that I wasn't going to love that one just because you didn't love it, you know, like it might touch me in a specific way. And I just find that super fascinating because there's, I have a whole bunch of music out there and I'm so surprised when somebody's like, Oh, I love this song of yours. And I'm like, shoot, I hate that song. You know what I mean? Right. Like I just didn't like how it came out, but it's your favorite song of mine. You know what I mean? And it just, Oh, but that's, that's the unpredictability of music though. Absolutely. That's absolutely. Like, I think, um, was it Neil that wrote irreplaceable for Beyonce? Mm -hmm. And he was just like, Oh, I didn't really care about the song. I just was like, uh, it's cool. But mm -hmm. then she's like, I love this record. And she puts it out and it becomes a number one hit. Like, like the music is so unpredictable. It like, really you is. don't man. know. You might write a song like, ah, oh, it's okay. But then that's a song that somebody really needed in their really dark time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It, and it's, it's so funny, man. Like, cause I talk about this all the time in the sense of like, I have this one song out there that did particularly well out of all the other ones that I've released, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, man, the production on that could have been 10 times better. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the lyrics, like the vocals, I wish they were, the, it, they're too loud compared to the, and it's like, nobody cared, you know what I mean? Like, and then I, I put out a track and I'm like, this is a banger and it, it's right. all, it does all right, you know what I mean? But it's just, it's just so unpredictable and you never know. I find that so fascinating. But I like what you said though, that's a really interesting perspective, especially with, modern media i guess is the way you know the traditional route is you write a song you record it you release it as a single well it's kind of different today you could release it as a moment on instagram you could release it just as a youtube video you, yeah. you could you know that's actually a very fascinating and, and interesting way to think of the music industry because mm -hmm. it could blow up on youtube you know and get a couple million views and like that is fantastic you know what i mean that's just as right. good as a, a single on spotify doing that you know it is right. but it doesn't necessarily hold the weight of pressure of releasing a song on spotify you know what I mean? but the thing like i think i think as songwriters like our objective is not necessarily to, to release the music sometimes mm -hmm. like in mass space like there's a lot of songs we don't release um or we don't even record and it's because it's a sacred space mm -hmm. And we're totally fine wasting everything at the feet of Jesus. It's mm -hmm. like certain songs that are like, oh, we might not ever record this. Or yeah. it might not ever do crazy in numbers, or it might not ever do whatever. But like it isn't about like numbers. At least mm -hmm. for a lot of us, like it's not it's not about numbers. 
Yeah. It's just about like I just want to bless the heart of the father. And if he decides to take this like altar in the form of a song and spread it mm. across the globe for everyone to have an opportunity to meet with him. Yeah. Do mute through this particular record thing. Sweet. Yeah. yeah I mean, Absolutely. So, there's a lot of things we don't release. And there's a lot of things we do. So I think it's just finding that line of like, hey, we should probably put this out. This will probably be a blessing to people. They're like, hey, we might just want to keep this one sacred for a second because I don't know, like it's something it just feels really special and it's like, well, we'll release it later. Mm. I mean. Absolutely. I I actually really appreciate that perspective. Absolutely. It's also super interesting as a songwriter to realize, you know, like some songs come in 15 minutes and some songs take 15 years. Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah, that part. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's so funny. And then it's some of the ones you work so hard on, like you spend two years writing and it like again, like and like not that the numbers or anything are the end goal of always it but it is funny to see that the reception isn't necessarily what you expected for how much work you put in sometimes and sometimes mm-hmm. you're like oh yeah i took up my acoustic guitar wrote this in eight seconds and yeah. people are like oh this is the best song you ever wrote i'm like but i spent years and years and years on this one. <laughs> i mean there's, so there's, there's two things to that one i think it's it's interesting because callie literally said that she took a i think a year to write ever be mm-hmm. right, right callie wrote ever be yeah and they had a whole notebook about it. Like it took a year for that record. And then you have songs like So Well I that took a year, two years to write that are crazy. Mm-hmm. But then it's like the other side of the coin is like when it comes to like, oh, it's spent years, I think we can be perfectionist sometimes. Sure. We 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 cannot trust our judgment, or I think it's just like we are we're so and at least for me, I'm not gonna say like but at least for me, sometimes I can get so wrapped up in the process or I can get so wrapped up in the sure. record. I'm like, it just doesn't feel like it. I wish it could have missed, or it doesn't feel blah. blah, blah. But I think giving this ourselves the space to be creative, but also like giving ourselves the space to be like, it's not, it's not like maybe I'm just like overthinking everything. Just let it let it be what it is and let whatever happened happen. Being open handed with it instead of like, I gotta make this work or you know what I mean? So it's that this defining the balance when it comes to that. So yeah, but I do agree, like sometimes it is annoying that I wrote this in 10 minutes. <laughs> Amazing. I took two years on this. Oh, yeah, it's, it's cool. It's got a nice beat. <laughs> yeah, man. I actually relate a lot to what you were saying about, like, sometimes maybe we, we're too we're trying to be too perfectionist with the tracks. Because um, you listen to some of these, like, tracks that are on the radio, and you're like, hmm, I would have never written that lyric because it seems too simple or too cliche. But obviously these professional songwriters are, so maybe, I, maybe I'm being too hard on myself. You know what I mean? Maybe I'm making it too hard on myself. Like... And and that's why you know it's taken forever to get the track out, or you know I don't know. It's, but it's it is just interesting to see um, how 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 hard how judgmental we can be on our songwriting, you know. Absolutely. What are you doing to to continually better your songwriting? Um, reading books, man. I like I mm. and I watch like videos of like this guy named Rob Murphy. I watch like videos about the industry. Um, mm-hmm. I watch a lot of different things. Um, like I'm, I'm reading a couple books right now. Like I'm reading Hosting the Presence by Bill Johnson. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm reading, um, the heat, the keys to heaven's economy. And then someone else just in my book. I'm trying to think of which one it was. Is that Chris Valton? No, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. No, it's not well, what, what, you said Robert Murphy was the the for the first one. Rob, the first. Rob Murphy is a um is a songwriter. Well, he mm-hmm. was a songwriter. Um, mm-hmm. he, from what I understand, I think he's one of the songwriters that has like the most number one hits, or he has a hit, he has a number one hit in every genre. Wow, yeah, that's wild. So that's I think that's what he. If I'm, I could be wrong, but yeah. I think when I started watching his videos. They were saying like he has a number one hit in every genre of music. That's wild. Like I think I watch a lot of Ralph Murphy videos. Um, I'm a, I'm a words like I love words and I love like phrases. Mm-hmm. So if I'm watching a good movie and they say mm-hmm. something that hits me, I'm like, like I I need to write that down. Like I've been watching The Chosen and the season one episode one Mary Magdalene says like, hey, what happened? I was one way now I'm another, and what happened in the middle was him. And it's like, oh wait a minute. 
that struck something in me. So like, I love phrasing and things like that. So I watch movies, I'll like read a book here and there. Like I'll see something inspirational on Instagram that like I like I follow certain pages unintentionally so that I can like, like mm. come inspired, like put something in my path. Yeah. I'm learning like, I learn, I'm learning I have a routine in my life. So like I put things in my way. I'm like, I know I'm gonna go there. So I put this in my way so I can like, oh, since I'm here, I'm gonna just, so when it comes to my social media. I love that, man. That's brilliant rather than use like, that's brilliant. So like, and rather than use like social media for all of the goofy things, like a lot of times I follow inspirational accounts on purpose and then put the notifications on. So like, if there's a no, if there's an inspirational quote or if there's like a video of like somebody saying something that could be inspiring, I like it's on my feet a lot. Mm-hmm. So like, if you go to my Instagram now, you'll see like at the bottom, there's a J Cole like video and he's talking about like, um, just really quick. He's talking about the difference between one and success and realizing that when you get there, there are things that are way more important, but mm-hmm. they seem small because you were looking this way. Mm-hmm. But like love, family, support, like being involved with your like, you know what I mean, your family, like that's way more important. Yeah. And like you should you should really be successful in that. Like there are people that are successful in their careers but are failing their relationships. And it's like yeah. I'd rather be successful in my relationships. But all that to say, like I constantly put things in my way. So that I run into them, and when I see them, I'm like, okay, I'm right here. So let me just go ahead and mm-hmm. get out. I, I, do you? I, I totally relate to that. It's, it's super fascinating. Um, do you handwrite a lot of these notes, or do you have like a list, ever growing list on your phone? I have an ever growing list on my phone. <laughs> yeah, as do I. Really I have to make my screen clear. Like I have an ever growing list. Like, yeah, just things that I. Absolutely. Have you ever started to write a song and then kind of leave it and kind of forget about it? And then when you go back to that song later on in life, your your perspective has kind of changed and the meaning of the song has ever changed? Yep. Yeah, it's it's fascinating. Um, all the time. Um, I, don't, I don't think I've ever told anybody like in the public this, but like I, there are times that I want to go back and rewrite Promises. Mm-hmm. Because the perspective I wrote it in versus the one I have now is is different. That's because my environment is different. My roots are different because the soil is different and like where I'm around, like the people I'm around, like it's all different. So now that I'm learning new things and seeing different things, I'm like, oh, I would write that differently. Yeah. I think that's the the mark of a true growing songwriter though. Because mm-hmm. I think that if you felt the same way all the time, you're never growing, you're never going anywhere. But I think that that's actually, right. I think that's maturity. And who's to say, why can't you? You know, that, that's, I think that one of the things I love about the, the music industry that I think most people don't, tap into enough is like we we so often like put these boxes around us where it's like and it puts so much pressure so it's like but why can't you go and write a version two of promises you know what i mean like and i think that that'd be so interesting to hear you know promises 2.0 with the same melody same kind of idea but different lyrics and different perspective you know you never know that would be really interesting Right. But like we, 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 I, I think that i that's, that's how I kind of release as much music as I do is because like, I'm like, okay, I love this sample. Right. You know, like, or this track I'm making, whatever the case is, or I love this lyric, but I don't know if I want to use it here or not. Well, I'm like, well, who's to say like, why can't I just reuse it later? Like I'm the, yeah. I'm my boss. And so, yeah. you know, it's is not it, like, let me, yeah, all about it. Exactly. About so it. It's interesting. And, and, but so what was, I, and that's freeing to me at least yeah. because I'm like, okay, I don't have to feel like I'm wasting the song here or it could be better. It's like, well, maybe yeah. one day it will be better. Like, for example, yeah. actually, um, I, you know the song, I Took a Pill in Ibiza? Yep. That original song is like a really chill acoustic guitar, like, mm. but nobody's heard the original because it, the remix is the one that was famous. Yep. You know, or there was another, there's a, a band called Judah and the Lion. Um, yeah. And um, their, their massive hit, I forgot what it was called. It's like, it's like a, th- like i don't know take back or something like that take it all back or something like take it all in or something like that um but there's a it's take it all whatever say it's take it all back take it all back 2.0 is the famous one there's a f- previous version that nobody's ever heard that is really? out there you can hear it on spotify but it's just really? so it's just i i find that super freeing as an artist so i I'd, I'd be curious man maybe one day we hear a 2.0 version of promises <laughs> all of that but yeah maybe <laughs> Maybe man, I love that. That's cool. So, I'm so does the majority of um, and we, we don't have to go super in depth into this. I, I'm, I'm just, it's kind of a segue question, but does the majority of your income come from songwriting at the moment and like your songs that you release? Um, okay. Um, 
I think it's it's split between a, a couple of different things. Because the, the the follow up to that is, how do you manage the balance of pressure? Um, you know, because I I noticed that you know, for example, say the majority of my income comes from YouTube, right? So mm-hmm. before that was the case, there was much less pressure of of keeping the numbers up because it didn't really matter if I made this much money or this much money. Like it, that's not where I was paying my mortgage from. Now that it's my full time job, I find this unrealized pressure prior to joining it like being my thing i was like oh shoot like now if the views are going down i'm like no i don't, I don't like focusing on them because that's not the end goal because i i think it leads down a path that i don't want to go down but it subconsciously i'm like well i need to make sure i pay my mortgage this month so it adds right. this weird pressure so that's where i was going with that question i was like you know with songwriting because uh, that's the end goal for me, you know, to, is my songs to be paying the bills. But then I'm also thinking, like, man, that's got to add a ton of pressure, too. Like, if the next song that I release flops, like, mm-hmm. am I going to, you know what I mean? And it's just an interesting dynamic that I think that most people don't realize. Yeah. I mean, my my situation is kind of unique. At least I think so. Because I think, I, like you said, we never write songs with the intention of like i want to make a big bag i want to sure um because i think that can like you said it can pollute the integrity of the record sure Um, absolutely the intention like i'm always i'm a person that i tell in 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 all of my songwriting classes i tell people like hey the one thing i can tell you is be careful where you write from and honestly sometimes who you write with because not everybody's intentions or integrity is the same Absolutely. Or of integrity is the same. So you have to be careful. You have to know the heart of the person that you're writing with. And you have to honestly, a lot of times check your own heart from where you're writing from. Mm-hmm. Because if the goal is to make money, go be a mainstream, right? Or this is, this is specifically, specifically pertaining to um, worship. Mm-hmm. If the goal is to make money off of just writing worship, go be a mainstream writer. writer. You can go write for plays. You can go write for movies. You can go write for like entire like mainstream albums. You can go write in those arenas. But when it comes to the space that is sacred, that is worship, you have to write from a place of wanting to one advance the kingdom of the Lord, but also, but most importantly, like bless the heart of the Father. You know what I mean? So, as far as like if you're talking about in the worship space, I'm very intentional about that. I don't. Yeah allow myself to go into that space because like i want to protect the integrity and the sacred space that is worship and now the authenticity the, the authenticity you know what i mean absolutely I like wine songs not no more coca-cola songs that's a whole nother thing stream <laughs> as far as the mainstream like side like writing in that area of course like you want to write songs that like that like make a lot of money but more importantly than that you want to write songs that will I don't know impact people like i'm, mer- I'm i agree more importantly like i would rather feed my 25 people like i think when it comes to my songs personally when the ones i release there's a, probably about 25 people that really like love the record to the point like this changed my life forever mm-hmm. it's probably more than that but i'm saying like i only focus to like nurture and like feed those 25 people with the songs like something about this song is going to be a light for them it's going to be a beacon of hope for them or it's going to be something that they can hold on to in their dark season yeah i will help at least help guide them to the other side yeah. like that's my goal every time i sit down and write whether it's worship or or mainstream and it's like when it comes to mainstream things it's like i just want to nurture and feed people you know sure. what I mean? because music has this power that it 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 goes over language barriers there are people that can't speak a lick of english but can literally sing you the thriller album top to bottom like it breaks language barriers it, it it like merges races and like races and like honestly kind of ignores and pushes racism aside like you got to think about it. like music has this amazing power to unite people and bring people together mm-hmm. so why not use it for that absolutely like, why not write songs that everyone can be and you know what i'm saying enjoy like enjoy together so like mm-hmm. and you'll be surprised how unifying it can be yeah absolutely no man i think that that is a brilliant perspective and i i highly appreciate that perspective absolutely absolutely so going back to maverick city and your involvement with that how do you guys see so you're not coming to the show so there's a show in new york that i have tickets to actually um but you're not going to be there so how do you guys decide who's going to be where and what and when because and how many people are actually in maverick city 
because that uh, that is also I'm trying to figure out as well. <laughs> so what Maverick is is Maverick City is the artist. The people yeah. that sing at Maverick City are the collective. Okay. So there's about eight lead lake singers right now, but it really anybody can be Maverick. Sure. Anything happens with the eight that are now in, in space. Any uh, anybody else can come and be that part of Maverick. It's just right now. The, these are the prominent faces that you see at right now. Mm -hmm. It can change in the future. It can, it's interchangeable. Um, but when it comes to like choosing who's going to be where, I think most like the way we've been navigating it is whenever someone wants like people people from Maverick, it's a collective. So you have to request these people like directly. You have to be like, hey, we want to oh, we want to bring in these people to come and do this or they're like hey we want to bring the entire collective so like for the tour it's basically um it's about five or six of the main eight if i'm not, if I'm not mistaken so the main eight would be can, you, can Dante, you aaron um naomi chandler brandon lake me um mj and um I think Alton, Eugene. Okay. Eight. Yeah, yeah. I said Aaron Moses, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, like, those are the main eight, but they're always interchangeable. Mm -hmm. Always. So, like, at any point, it could be someone else. Like, the tribal artists are really coming up right now. So, you have, like, Ryan, and you have Mariah, and you have Tiana, and you have Cicely, and, like, you know what I mean? It's a lot of, it's, it's always interchangeable. So, we just, you have to kind of, pick like hey we want these people to come or you, yeah. or you like, contact their person's like booking team individually like hey we want you to come and hey we want you to come so yeah fascinating now are you signed to a label at the moment i'm not and i i appreciate that i think that that is so fascinating because um i am pro no label i think that that is i think that if you're well, let me rephrase it. I think you have to know yourself. I think that you have to be familiar with who you are as a person and comfortable in that. Because me being, you know, more business savvy, like it would be a waste for me to go to a label. You know, some people that might not be as business savvy. Well, you could build a team around you, or it might benefit. But yeah. um, I I find it so impressive and so inspiring, and I I actually like I really appreciate bringing to light these these um, people that are really making it work with no label. I think that, that is an, an incredible feat. Um, and I think it should become more public. So, um, I'd love to hear if you have any comments or I could ask some questions about that. I've... Um, when it comes to labels, man, I think that I'm going to walk carefully here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think when it comes to labels, man, I think that they have an, a, a strategic purpose. Sure. And I think that if it works for you, it can work for you. But mm -hmm. labels are not like, and not for everybody. Like, I think this is probably gonna get me in trouble with a lot of parents. <laughs> but I think college is not for everybody. College I, dropout, I think, absolutely. I think I think college is not for everybody. I think there are certain things that are just not for everybody. They can, they are amazing systems that are in place. And if that's for you and you take that path, it can work out amazingly for you. But I think that I think that for a lot of people, college is not the route. Like, I never went to college because I felt like. There are things you can teach me that I'm probably not going to need and I'm going to forget more than I remember. And the things that I actually really need, like I, I'm learning those now. Like the things that I really need, you should like, we should have learned like <laughs> earlier than college. We should have been taught financial literacy earlier. A hundred percent. See what I'm saying? A whole lot of things. So when it comes to that, I think that labels are just that things like for some people, they like, they're amazing. They, they can help you with, um, artist development they can put you in the room with like amazing songwriters they can get you what you need to be in the right like studios whatever may have you blah 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 but also we are in the technological age where you can pull out a laptop you can pull out your sm7 you can pull out your focus right you can get a logic or pro tools get auto tool and literally make a, an entire album Absolutely. you can have your friends that are up and coming come around you and play their wonky acoustic on your record and it'd be authentic and it was genuine people feel it so it's like you really don't need like labels either absolutely so and you mentioned, like, oh, putting, you mentioned even putting you mentioned even putting people in the room with people and it's like with the digital era you know you start to build your own platform and yeah. you know you can almost insert yourself into the room with a lot of you could just say send a message you can send an instagram you can send an email yeah. you know get right. a little scrappy find people's emails get a little and, scrappy, right 
So it's like, here's the thing. I think when it, I think this way, I think a lot of people, let me just say it this way. If you want to get, if you want a fast route or what can seem like a fast route to like your dreams as an artist, then yeah, you can get with a label. It's not a guarantee, but you can get with a label. If you want to be independent, it's the long game. Absolutely. You have to be business savvy. You have to learn things along the way. And it's like, it's, it's not going to necessarily be the thing that's like overnight sensation. No, you got to actually put in the work. You're going to put in the work with the label too, but there's a lot of things you're probably not going to have to worry about because you don't know to ask those questions. Hmm. But like when you're independent, you have to do it a lot on your own. And it's, everything has pros and cons. Everything has pros and cons. Cause you can be assigned to a label and get it out the mud. Just like you can be independent and get it out the mud. And you can get to a label and things will be amazing and take off. Just like you can be independent, it can take off. But it's just like, it's different pros and cons and it's different variables. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to labels, like I think they could be really good for certain, for certain people. And then I think the independent round is better, is good for other people too. Do you see yourself sticking independent? Do you see yourself potentially getting a label if the right opportunity comes? I'm going to hold on to my independence as long as I possibly can. Let me just go ahead and be honest. Yeah, I love that. Hey, I, I appreciate that. I think that that mm -hmm. is... I think that we need more artists like that. I think that I, and I, I can see in the next 10, 15, 20, 30 years, the label dominance is going to be becoming less and less. That's it's become less and less. It's, it's becoming less and less relevant. I think. Of course. Absolutely. I'm just trying to hold on my independence as long as I possibly can. Preach, just, man. I'm not trying to sign deals that don't make sense. Like I'm not trying to sign things because I'm a person, like if I feel like I'm under pressure to write something, then I can't do that. Mm. So, and I feel like once you sign contracts and things like well, that, well, that kind of goes back to the the earlier conversation of like you wouldn't know what that you have to now you have to perform now. Exactly, and I'm a person that's like the my space, the people I'm around, like my community, they've eradicated the idea of pressure out of my life. Yeah. yeah. Because I get to be here and be myself and not have to have this pressure to produce or pressure to to perform at all. Mm -hmm. So I'm like. They ruined it for everybody else. I'm not going to ever be in a space where I feel pressured. If I feel yeah. pressured, I'm not going. Like, because I can go home where I'm loved and there's no pressure. Preach. So I'm not going to sign a contract that make me feel pressured. Like, community is so important. If we have a community of people that stand behind you and like, look, we with you, regardless if the dream happens or not, you know, we're with you. We'll make, we'll find a way and we'll make it work. Mm -hmm. You have that, it changes the game. Because then it's like, I'm not going to sign a contract if I don't feel peace about it. If I feel pressured by that, I'm good on that. Why? Because I, I love my peace too much. I love my space too much. I love the fact that I don't have any pressure to try to make something happen. Yeah. Like when you do, when you work out of that space, you might get some really good product, but you could have had amazing product if you would have took your time and didn't have any pressure. The, and perfect example, maybe people don't even know this, but I have a friend named Abby Wilson. She goes by the name of Yeba. Mm -hmm. Took time to put her album out instead of mm -hmm. forcing it out, out of pressure. And it's the most amazing album I've heard yeah. in a long time. Mm -hmm. why because she didn't give into the pressure like i'm gonna take my time and i'm gonna process my life and i'm gonna process my heart and i'm gonna process everything blah 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 but i think like once you get in spaces that put pressure on you it's hard to produce anything so i absolutely agree independence means freedom independence and freedom means that you have no pressure to do anything it also means harder work mm. but it, it's independence you know what i mean like if you look at history, anytime that somebody had to go independent, that means they had to till the ground and pull themselves up by their own bootstraps. And they had to make things around them different and, and palatable for you to live. You know what I mean? You had to cut down trees and build things with your own two hands. It's a lot more work, but it means freedom. You get to make your own rules, your own, yeah. you to, your own precedence. Absolutely. Yeah. And that kind of goes right back into the pros and cons you were saying. Everybody has, everything has a pro and con. So the pro is you're, you're free. Like, you know, you and I could probably go and do whatever we want today. Mm -hmm. But it's a lot much harder of work, you know what I mean? Like the work, like it's very, very, very different, and you have oh. you really have to put in the work. You have so, to. But people don't normally see that; they just see the freedom that comes with it. They don't see the work that comes with it, and that's why I think so many, so many, not just even in music, just businesses or, or entrepreneurs it's, flop, you know, absolutely. because they don't realize that it's it's literally grinding your teeth every single day. Yes, Chance the Rapper, because he's independent, can say what he wants to on his tour. Yeah, as, as an artist, as a Christian, if he wants to have altar call at his tour, he can do that, and they can't tell him he can't because he's an independent artist. When you're not an independent artist, labels can tell you what you can and can't do. If mm. I want to put out a rock album tomorrow and a country album the next week, I can do that because I'm independent, and they're not going to tell me, "Oh, you can't do that because it'll mess up this, that, and the third." And we have stake in your life because we put this much money and X amount of dollars into your life. That's a different ball game. It's like I'm not 
I just for me it just doesn't work. I'm giving the reason why it doesn't work for me. Absolutely, absolutely, I hear that. But now you have management though. I do correct. So how did you decide? How did you know when you were ready to go and get management? When I realized my life was a mess because I couldn't keep up with everything. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good problem to have though i guess right career wise i this is the thing i hate like trying to map out things and schedule things and plan things like i absolutely hate it i'm mm-hmm. just i'm such a spontaneous person like mm-hmm. i make spontaneous like decision like i literally will make a decision like i'm making a decision right now like at the end of tour i'm definitely going to like universe studios or disney world or something like <laughs> i'm definitely going and that's a spontaneous decision like i'm willing to but I found a person in my life that's like, I love to do all of that stuff. And I looked at her, I'm like, do you want to do this for me? So and she's like, yeah, what's the pay? And I'm like, oh, I'll make sure you get like well taken care of. Like, <laughs> Absolutely. I don't want to like handle my life. Like, yeah. So, so you, did you, you went out and sought somebody, they didn't seek you, right? Um, Yeah, yeah, I actually like was looking for, like there are people that are like asking to do it and it's nothing against them. I just was like, mm, I would, I want someone that's like in like the space I'm in, so that they yeah. understand like my heart posture. They understand why I make the decisions I make, and they understand like the overall like dream of everything. So yeah. the ways when I feel like I'm like feel like slacking off, they're like, no, this is the mission. Yeah. Like if I'm, like me personally, I'm like I'm everything's changing in my life. Like my roots, my theology, my everything in my life is changing and me wanting to like be this the person the goal to be a better person in these areas require me to sacrifice certain things on this side of things and i'm being very vague i know but because she understands the mission she's like hey you said you wanted to be this so Mm -hmm. you have to like not you have to not sway on this you you cannot budge on this and we find balance so i wanted someone that understood my life it's like hey if i want to take a year off i need you to hold me to it Cause I'm giving you the keys and the power to my life to tell sure. me no. Yeah, absolutely. So what, so for people that may watch this after the fact that are looking potentially maybe in soon to look for management, what are some things that you would recommend they look for in a person and stay away from in a person? Um, you should feel as if that person wants to see the dream happen, even if it takes 20 years. Hmm. Or get people like me. They are more so worried about like who I'm am as a person behind this mm. or more than they are about my career. Yeah, that's important. Personally, that's where I'm at. I'm like, I don't want to care about my career more than I care about people. Yeah. I care about more my career more than I want to care about um my family. So I would say get a manager that holds you accountable. Yeah. To and what then- you they'll ask you a question of like hey what do you want to do because i'm going to hold you accountable to that yeah tell me what you're looking for what you're aiming for and then keep you accountable to that if they're willing to look you in the face and tell you no to things because of what you told them that you wanted mm-hmm. like yeah get a manager that's, that's willing to tell you the hard truths of like listen i you one i need you to be the most authentic version of yourself possible because if you know if you're the most authentic self, you'll know who you are. Then you'll know what the mission is, and I can hold you to accountable to the mission because you know who you are. Yeah. Don't be management that are trying to make you into something that you're not. Yeah. It's like you don't agree with any of those things, but they're like, "But I'm gonna make you." No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. That's a thing. If they're trying to shape you and change you into somebody else that you never signed up to be, different. If you tell them like, "Hey, I want this out of my life." And they're like, great, I can hold you accountable to that. And actually hold you accountable, that's the management you want. Yeah. Because the you mean management you don't want. Don't grab the management that's only about the dollar. Because sometimes yeah. it's not a, a you're gonna get to a space in wealth where it's not no longer gonna be about wealth, where it can only be about two things. Pro and it's a pro and a con. If it's no longer about the money when you get to that form of wealth, it's either gonna be about power or it's gonna be about people. Hmm. you're going to either make music to change the lives of people or you're going to make music or try to make more, make wealth to try to like use your power yeah. over people. And that's you see- in, in, in success. Yeah. It's power, it's about people. You see who you are before you're successful and, and gain influence is who you're going to be afterwards. Just in yes, absolutely. I completely agree. Now I'm curious on your perspective on that, that power of people. 
do you find that that's from the get go or once you reach that level of you know relative financial security i or think both? i think that depending on what your heart posture actually is on in the beginning will really determine where it will yeah. be yeah so like that's fascinating man. Like, it can either want like when you when you obtain a certain amount of level of success and wealth it's no longer about like gaining success and wealth because you have yes. systems in place that are constantly making true you know yes i see yeah. what you mean systems you'll have several you have several streams of income and you'll and you'll learn how to manage and how to make things work for you but at the same time like if a person is generous when they have nothing, they're really gonna be generous and have everything. Yeah. If they're like closed off when they're at the bottom, like, and the thing is you have to be mindful, you have to watch because sometimes it can be very hidden. Because when you're at the bottom, the bottom is really humbling. So <laughs> yeah. a person can show you a whole lot of humility whenever they're like at the bottom. But if you give them influence, you give them wealth, you'll really see where their heart is. Mm -hmm. You'll really see it. But I'm saying that, but there is a point in, in wealth that it either becomes about power or about people. Mm -hmm. I could say a whole lot of things that make me, that would be, yeah, but it's like, I'm going to use what I have to obtain more power. I need more of it so I can get more power. Or it's like, I want to use what I have to help the lives of people. Yeah. Like there, the guy who wrote, um, our God is an awesome God, he reigns. Mm -hmm. He told his label, I want a regular man's salary. I want $25,000 a year from whatever I make from my royalties. The rest of it, donate it to charity or something like that. Wow. Weird. That's wild. Because it's like, it's about people. Yeah. I don't want to, it's not about, the, it's not about using it to get to power. It's about the people. I want to write records that change the lives of people. Yeah. And I want to be like normal. Hmm. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So That's wild. Yeah. I love that, man such a such a fresh perspective because i think that most people don't even get to that level of thinking i think i don't yeah. even know if they even recognize it. and not that there's anything wrong with that i'm just saying that there's a definite maturity that's uh that you you carry man i appreciate that yeah, man. I appreciate I'm, so I'm sorry no i'm loving hey I'm, I'm like taking notes over here man absolutely the pet the pe either power of people i'm i'm down for it, man i always that was a deep a deep nugget of wisdom man i appreciate that for sure um, so I want to be respectful of your time. So we're just going to talk about one more topic. We're going to talk about the upcoming tour. Um, and I'd love to hear you. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about the tour for uh, a quick sec. So you, what part of the tour are you a part of? And uh, when does that start? What are you most looking forward to? Let's just talk about that for a little. I I mean, like, like I said, it's about five, six of us. Yeah, it's about six of us that are on like the tour all the time. And um, I just help like sing and we lead in all the records and we go through the set and a lot of my old well, i sing two songs on the tour um i sing miracles and promises and i'm not gonna tell you where they are in the show but yeah. <laughs> i sing those two uh records and um yeah man i just support all everybody else that's on the tour so yeah, cool singing a record i make sure i sing my bgv part or whatever just to like let them be able to leave rest of over course and to just like carry wherever God is like letting yeah. flow. So absolutely. If you could give one tip to somebody that's will future tour, what would that be? One tour tip. Like a lot of socks and drawers. That's what everybody says, man. That's funny. That's like the common thing. It's funny. I've heard that several times uh, before. A lot of socks and drawers. Because <laughs> the thing is is like <laughs> between the time the I don't I listen we uh, i've only had this is my very first tour and we okay. only done the first four days in cali which we were um we were in sprinters and we had, like stayed the night in every city that we went to so um starting tomorrow is our whole first stop in ohio and then from that point on we're busing it like you know overnight so, busing kind of thing overnight busing kind of thing. <laughs> and um, it's still in sprinters or in in, in no, 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 buses Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, we got buses. So, um, that's a different thing. It's like everybody keeps telling me pack socks and drawers, and I'm thinking like, yeah, I'm gonna probably need a lot of socks and drawers because I'm like, I don't want to run out. I would rather have more than I need. Yeah. And need more than I have. Yeah, I hear that, man. So I hear that. That is so funny. That the second is... thing I would say is like, you gotta love the people that you're doing it with. Absolutely. That's big. Forward. 
That's Otherwise, crazy. you're just coworkers. You gotta love the people you do it with, so it can feel like family, and it's like one big journey together. Absolutely. Otherwise, it's not gonna feel right. Absolutely. You know what the best part of tour is, though? One of the best parts. All yeah. the different cuisine you get to try across America and the world, man. Come on. Now we're talking to the New Yorker. Meet a Long Island yeah. Italian Spanish. Uh, yeah. New Yorker, man. So yeah. I, I just went on a big trip Ooh. and I, I, I was in a couple different cities and I was like, every city was Nashville or LA or Dallas. I had to try the local cuisine, man. I love yeah. that stuff. I get, gained 10 pounds, but <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I loved it, man. What they call it gaining the tour 10. Uh, is that what it is? I don't know. That's funny. I've never heard that term before. That's uh, hysterical. I this, Well, I gained it, so that's oh, amazing. Man. Well, wrapping it up, it, what's the best way for everybody watching this now after this? What's the best way that they can go and support what you're up to these days? Um, You can go to my website at Um, You can follow me on Instagram. I am Joe underscore L. Um, that's for every dreamer.com or every dreamer.com. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I'm going to put that in the description after the fact. Hmm. Or we can, uh, or honestly, you can, you know, come to Shepherdston Covington and, you know, listen to my, my dad preach. Hey, there you go. I'm dead. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'm a book a trip. I'll come <laughs> take a listen to yeah. your dad preach. Absolutely. Man. Anybody can do. I love, love that. That's cool, man. Very cool. If you can hang out for two more seconds, I just want to say yeah. thank you so much for everybody watching this. Definitely go check out all the stuff that he, that Joe and Maverick City are up to. Go check out his websites. All the links will be down in the description uh, for his website and also for the uh, his Instagram. Uh, so go check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely consider subscribing and checking out my music. It's the best way to support the channel. I'll see you guys yeah. in the next video.